Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where in the world you're joining us from. And welcome to the Nautel webinar entitled Saving Money with Nautel's NX Series Medium Wave, that's AM to you North American people, transmitters. I'm delighted to be joined today by Wendell Lonergan, my guest, a head of broadcast sales. Uh, welcome, Wendell. Thanks, Chuck. And it's great to be um, on this webinar. And it's it's so great when you get to tell a really good story that everybody's happy about because who doesn't like saving money? Absolutely. Uh, one thing that many people may not know is that Wendell, in a previous life, was the designer of some of our earliest AEM transmitters. You've been with the company for quite a while. Isn't that right, Wendell? Uh, just over 40 years. <laughs> That's, wonderful. That's wonderful. So you've seen quite an evolution in, in AM transmitters. Sure have, sure have. And been to many sites all over the world and, and really pleased that uh, the last big site I was at was a two megawatt site that's that's using some of the technologies we're going to talk about today. I was with you on that visit, and that's just an, a totally amazing installation. Um, one of the things that's really interesting about today's webinar is that the what we're talking about efficiency and, and, and saving money through reduced electrical running costs, and there has been a true revolution in the last, say, decade um, of, a, of a huge difference in the running costs of transmitters. So without reducing any of the coverage of the station or the loudness of the station, you can see a massive decline in the electrical running costs. And that's what we really want to focus on today because in no other arena, not the car, car efficiency or FM transmitter efficiency, in no other arena is this magnitude of a difference um, uh, having had happened in the in the way that it has happened in the AM transmitter field in the last decade. So we're going to talk about the NX series, what makes it so efficient. We're going to talk about a really 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 cool technology called modulation dependent carrier level. We'll talk about that. We'll talk. We'll actually bring up a spreadsheet, and and you can have access to the spreadsheet, uh, calculating the savings for that. And then a tour through the AUI, the Advanced User Interface. And then we're going to take your questions and comments. So as always, on the application that you're using to tune into our webinar today, <clears throat> there are there's a place to ask questions. And if you click on that, you can type in a question at any time during the whole broadcast. And then at the end of the broadcast, Wendell and I will do our level best to try to answer any questions you may have. And do remember that the completion of a Nautel webinar qualifies you for a half of an SBE recertification credit, which is identified under Category 1 of the recertification schedule for the Society of Broadcast Engineers certification. So kind of a double bonus here. So let's talk about the Nautel NX series. This is a full line of state-of-the-art, fully solid-state AM transmitters from 3 kilowatt to 2 megawatts. I suspect there's a lot of people that are not sure that the terms state-of-the-art and AM transmitters belong in the same sentence, but in fact they do. And when we talk about the technology that's utilized in the NX series, you'll see what I mean. It, it combines industry-leading industry, industry leading efficiency combined with legendary Nautel robustness. It has the AUI, and we're going to go into great detail on that, which allows you to monitor and control the system from anywhere over IP. Um, compact yet accessible, hot pluggable modules, and minimize single point failure. We'll talk about that a little bit too. And we're going to talk about the fact that whether or not your digital future includes DRM or HD radio. We got your back. This thing works with it, and it works better than anything else out there. So this is probably my favorite slide of this whole webinar. This is all the places in the world where the NX series has been installed. And you can see by the color of the, of the little dots um, where uh, what power level they are. And, and Wendell, do you want to explain a couple of those kind of a pinkish color dots you see on there? Sure. Um, so up under the word Poland, uh, there's a pinkish dot, which is an NX400 um, in Hungary. Um, and the actual fact is that is five NX400s combined together. So that's what comprises the two megawatt 
system that is in fact installed in Hungary. Um, in Oman, you'll see a, an orange um, a dot and there's actually several of those in Oman, but they're combined together um, to make, well, they're running at 500 kilowatts. So there's a lot of combined high power systems. And for those who don't know where Oman is, it's right under the word Iran that's basically partially obscured. Correct, just east of Saudi Arabia. Exactly. Yeah, so uh, lots, of, lots of big power systems out there. When you look at um, just to the right of that, east of that, you see India is completely filled up with lots of NX transmitters, and these are all designed to run in a full digital mode um, to to meet the all India radio specifications. Yep, for a DRM. Yep, and in, in a place that I'd like to be, it's it's kind of uh, cold in in North America today. Um, in many parts of it anyway, I'd like to be down in the Caribbean. So you can see a pink dot right there north of Venezuela. That's Bonaire, Netherlands, West Antilles. And that's where Transworld Radio has a 400 kilowatt transmitter. You visited that site as well, Wendell. I did, in fact. And they're doing very well. And they are also taking advantage of MDCL on their transmitter. And the interesting thing about that particular pink dot just north of Venezuela is that's the highest power um, medium wave transmitter in the Western Hemisphere. And the one in Hungary is the highest power medium wave transmitter. The two megawatt in Hungary is the highest power medium wave transmitter in the world. So kind of an interesting screen, lots to talk about there. Indeed. Anything else you'd like to add? Um, no, that's that, you know, the, the picture tells a, uh, a thousand words. And all of those transmitters are upgradable to digital radio in the future. Whether or not they're using it right now, they all can be. And uh, that's, that's very good going forward. Okay, so let's talk about the transmitter itself. Um, these transmitters are very compact. I have to tell you, Wendell, I started, my first real chief engineering job was in a station in Colorado. And we had a BC5E. And I recall that that transmitter not only had a whole pile of tubes and mercury vapor rectifiers, but it was like 25 feet long and you go inside to change things. Um, and that was a five kilowatt AM transmitter. Uh, today, uh, this NX100 we see on the right hand side of the screen is 38 inches by 44 inches by 72 inches tall. And there's an external power transformer, but it isn't all that big. And, and, and you know the whole 400 kilowatt only takes 4.3 square meters, whereas some other brands, brand G is three times as large, brand T is nearly four times as large, brand S is almost four times as large, and at 90% total efficiency, the Nautel is more efficient than any of them. So this is really revolutionary, and a lot of people, you know, they didn't. In, when you went in and did the uh, Hungary installation, they didn't even bother taking out the old transmitter because there. The new one didn't take all that much space. That's correct. That's correct. And it's funny, you took me back to my first installation when I joined the company, which is a, a 10 kilowatt at a local university. Mm -hmm. And they had an RCA 5 kilowatt operating at the time, which was three cabinets, each one bigger than the NX100. And you could walk in and you actually turned on a light switch similar to what you would do in a normal building yep. to, to work inside there. It's yes. fascinating in, in a relatively short lifespan that you and I have had the, in career in this business, the amount of revolution of technology. I mean, not only are we talking about space, not only are we talking about the solid state amplifiers, not only are we talking about the efficiency, but there's things like, I recall, we had a wooden board about 18 inches long that had some tube sockets on it. And it was running all the time with a big transformer, it was running all the time, keeping the mercury vapor rectifiers hot. <laughs> so that just in case you had to replace them, they didn't blow up the transmitter. That's right. And the other thing I remember is the big, almost a full rack cabinet of relays, because the whole logic in the transmitter was relays. And now you're looking at, at, at microprocessor controllers that are controlling the whole nine yards and doing web serving to boot. And the old, the old uh, broadcast engineer's tool, the little green, uh, adjustable Exolite screwdriver sure, is a greenie. not used at all in this transmitter. There's not a single nope. 
potentiometer and the whole transmitter. Or variable capacitor or variable inductor or whatever. It's all controlled by the the AUI in the system. So let's keep on let's keep on moving. Let's talk about the incomparable AUI. It's accessible from anywhere with just a web browser. Monitors and controls hundreds of parameters, as you'll see, because we're going to take a live walk through an actual transmitter. It has a real-time spectrum analyzer, a real-time network analyzer that works with normal modulation, and it can be configured to send email or SMS alerts. I have to share with you a story. Many years ago, I was doing a trade show in Hong Kong, and I was explaining the NX transmitter to a relatively older, relatively short Chinese gentleman who was watching this presentation. And as I got to the part where I was talking about the network analyzer, he started to cry. And I asked him, did I offend you in some fashion? What, what have I said? And he looked at me through tear-filled eyes. And he said, do you know how many nights I could, I could have spent with my wife? <laughs> it is like that, isn't it? Because I remember what we had, what we used to have to do when we didn't have a network analyzer built into the transmitter that we could check what was going on from our homes, from that matter. That's right. That's the AUI. Always done at night. One of the things that's interesting about the transmitter is that it basically has a receiver built into it. If you look here at this schematic, if you can see my little arrow, look at the coupler. That's an RF coupler bringing back an RF signal into an analog to digital converter. That is then mixed with the local oscillator, brought down to local IMQ, and is compared with the theoretically perfect signal that should have been emanated from the transmitter. That error term goes through adaptation and controls a lookup table so that the input signal that is being fed to the transmitter in a real-time basis is pre-corrected for dozens of, or a dozen, of, of various different types of distortion that can occur in the transmitter. And this causes the transmitter to be virtually perfect in terms of its performance and an ability to replicate not only the perfect digital radio signal for HD radio or DRM, but it also optimizes tremendously the analog signal, and it makes quite a difference. Is that the proper way to have explained that, my friend? Excellent job. Okay. The digital exciter creates a medium wave waveform sampled at 1.8 mega samples per second. And I can't stress this next point enough. The direct IMQ feed over AES. If you've ever done a, an installation of digital radio, whether it's DRM or it's HD radio, it doesn't make any difference on somebody else's transmitter. You'll remember you have to take the mag and the phase outputs out of the DRM or HD radio exciter and then feed them to the analog inputs in the transmitter and then very carefully balance both the amplitudes and then correct the timing to make it all work and maximize the performance. You don't have to do any of that with this. By a direct IMQ feed over AES, we do it completely digital and there's none of that and you end up with a more robust digital signal that locks quicker because it's far more accurate. And all of this technology that's built into the transmitter works for either DRM or HD radio. So you may not have a plan today of implementing digital radio, but who's to say in five years or 10 years, well within the life of the transmitter, that you may wish to have digital radio operating in your station and you're going to see that it's plug and play. Now let's begin talking about why the NX series is so efficient. One reason is that we use multi-phase PDM, pulse duration modulation, which is precisely controlled by the DSP. This is the simplified schematic of a single power module, and you'll see that there's three phases of PDM. There's three modulators, independent modulators, in the modulation side of a single module. And then they're combined and go through the modulator filter. But the, the turning on and turning off of those FETs is under direct control of the DSP, and it's precisely done so for a maximum of, of uh, efficiency. In addition, the RF drive to the H bridge of very high power uh, FETs in the RF amplifier. So uh, this is the H bridge. There are the four FETs here and here and here and here. And they're driven 
uh, on opposite corners. So if this needs the Q1 and Q4 is turned on, why Q3 and Q2 is turned off and vice versa. And the DSP knows never to, turn, to change the state of a transistor when there's voltage across it. And that's how we eliminate so much of the inefficiency that typically occurs in a PA stage. Absolutely. Right. And, and these devices were, were very carefully picked out to have very, very low on resistance. Um, so the, the, the loss in the fat is very low um, because of, of the current flowing through the fat. And also um, the DSP also takes care of the shape of the gate drive signal to the device to further increase efficiency. And the tuning of the filter is also done in a manner that it reduces the FCV squared losses in the device through switching losses. So there's a lot of science in this in this small assembly. Yep, yep. And and these FETs that you're talking about, that H bridge of FETs, are these four transistors here. You'll note they can be changed with just a screwdriver, but they're way overrated for the current that's passing through them. And as a result, the on resistance is less and it increases the efficiency just that little bit more. In addition, the modulator rectifiers are using silicon carbide rectifiers and those also aid significantly in the efficiency of the transmitter. That's exactly right. And this young fellow is helping us show the, make the argument about the size of the power transformer. Why is the size of the power transformer important? Because we oversize the power transformer and we use larger uh, conductors than we would normally, larger windings than we would normally use simply to reduce the resistance and improve the efficiency once again. So either this transformer is really big or the guy standing to the left is kind of small. <laughs> Maybe a combination of each, but do note, do note that he's wearing safety shoes while he's in the final assembly area. Absolutely. <laughs> Very good. Very good. This is the transformer for one of your NX400s. Do you happen to remember where that particular NX400 was going? That was one of, uh, that was Bonaire. Is, is that right? Okay. Yep. So that went down to the Caribbean right now. That's correct. Excellent. Okay, so now let's talk about MDCL. MDCL stands for Modulation Dependent Carrier Level. And it is the, uh, it causes the ability to save a tremendous amount, over perhaps 30% of your electrical running costs without changing anything about the power being emitted from your station. Um, and this is all possible because in AM, the carrier doesn't do anything. It contains two thirds of the transmitted power, but it doesn't carry any information. This is kind of a silly thing to call something that doesn't carry any information a carrier, but that's the way it is. That's the history that we've been dealt with. So what, but you know, if you take away the carrier, then you have double sideband suppressed carrier, and it sounds like Donald Duck on a normal AM radio, and that's not acceptable. So what we've figured out, or much smarter people about 20 or 30 years ago over in Europe figured out is there are clever ways to duck the carrier, to reduce the carrier dynamically with modulation so as to not sound like Donald Duck, but re reduce the amount of wasted power being sent into the carrier. And there are a different number of a number of different algorithms that are possible. Um, that uh, have been written by various organizations and all have their specific claims as to what they can be, what they can do with them. Um, but all of them do exactly the same thing. They all um, change the power in the carrier dynamically along with the modulation. And interestingly, all of these organizations, such as the BBC and Deutsche Welle and all these organizations over in Europe that that were really trying to figure out ways to save money, but at the same time not have any effect on the listening audience, did tremendous amounts of double-blind uh, uh, research over many decades and proved that uh, properly installed, MDCL does not affect either the coverage area of the station or the audio quality of the signal being broadcast 
and yet it can offer up to 30 percent of, of uh, savings in actual power consumed. Um, and Nautel, most companies have, have offered uh, adapters to modify their transmitters um, to do MDCL of some kind or another. Um, and those adapters cost money. They were an option. Some of them were in the $5,000 range, I think. Um, but when we had developed the NX series, Nautel decided right away that this was something that needed to be in the transmitter at a no extra charge price and just need to be turned on through the AUI. So if you look here on the right-hand side of the screen and you can see a, a pull-down called Dynamic Carrier Control, and there you can select which preset or which algorithm you want to use, and it's just that simple. And you can try various systems out to see how they sound on air, adjust them to a certain extent, and uh, you can find out exactly how this works on your station. But there are a number of stations in the United States. Didn't used to be legal to do MDCL in the United States because of carrier shift. You think about what we're talking about here with MDCL. Carrier shift is the reduction or, or uh, of the carrier with modulation. And that used to be an indication of a bad power supply. But uh, the FCC, in their wisdom, came out and said, well, you know, for power saving purposes, let's change the rules. Let's, instead of completely prohibiting carrier shift, let's say carrier shift is OK as long as you mean to do it. And so basically, that's what the rules say today, as long as you mean to do it. So, so Wendell, this next thing is you've had the most involvement in. Uh, the BBC is working on yet a new form of MDCL that has some pretty exciting promise. That's correct. Uh, the BBC came to me at the IBC show in Amsterdam this year, and they've done some testing on their long wave transmitter in Droitwich, um, a very long, long, long running station. And uh, they've done double blind testing as people that wish to get further information can download this paper and read it. Um, and they've been able to realize far greater savings um, and have low distortion um, and still good coverage with, with a new algorithm. So basically what they've done is taking the AMC um, algorithm, which is a 3 dB companioning uh, one millisecond attack time, and change it to 6 dB with a 50 millisecond attack time. And the results have been fantastic. So uh, we are now working um, in engineering with the BBC to see um, if we can introduce this to some of the many transmitters that Nautel has with the, with, um, the infrastructure providers, which is now Arkiva. And um, hopefully we can, we can help them save even more energy costs as they go forward. Clarify this for me, my friend. If we go from 3 dB to 6 dB in companding, can you give me a rough idea of, you know, if we were saving 30% at 3 dB, does that mean we're saving 60% at 6 dB? Well, um, you're go instead of going to half power, you're going to quarter power. So let's yeah. see, you know, yeah. Wow. Okay. Now, in addition to that, and completely separately, it has not gone unnoticed, shall we say, um, in the in the audio processing manufacturing field, that since the amount of reduction of the carrier is related to the average amplitude of the modulation over a period of time, then it maximizing the modulation over a period of time results in actually less power usage. And so now there is some work that's been done, and, and we actually had a presentation at our NUG two years ago from a station who was, result, or was reporting on some tests that he'd actually run at his station with a major audio processing manufacturer to, to see if they could actually get more savings from their MDCL settings due to savings in the audio processor. And I believe there's work going on in that area uh, in the United States at this point. That's correct, yes. So these are really exciting and, and uh, this, is, this is cool new technology. And you know, if you, if you draw the line linearly out, 
um, I can see the, the future where the AM transmitter is actually feeding power back into the AC lines. The power <laughs> meters are running backwards and the power companies are sending you checks. No, not really, but <laughs> it's going that way, isn't it? All right. Well, yes. So what I'd like to do now is to switch to a spreadsheet that I put together that I think would help people understand what MDCL could do for us. So this is a spreadsheet, and, and we're going to make this available in some fashion to you if, you if you'd like to have the spreadsheet. And basically what happens, you plug in your cost in U.S. cents per kilowatt hour. I use 21 cents per kilowatt hour because in many parts of the world it's running about that. Other parts of the world may be less, but you can actually just change this field to say 17 cents all the way across and it'll just work. Um, you plug in the power of your transmitter, that's the nameplate power of your transmitter, and you plug in the rated efficiency. And when you do that, and this is either the rated efficiency coming from the spec sheet or it's coming from actual um, tests that you've done uh, from your power bills. And it'll give you the consumption in kilowatt hours at 100% modulation. Um, and then it'll allow you to enter in the number of hours of operation per day and the days of operation per year. And then it will calculate the total consumption on an annual basis in kilowatt hours at 100% modulation. Then it's relatively simple math to figure out the total energy cost in U.S. dollars and the transmitter savings per year. So, for instance, in this equation, we used to be running a 60% efficient transmitter. That would be typical for a relatively good but old plate-modulated tube transmitter that a lot of people still have on the air, running 100 kilowatts and replacing it with an NX100, which the efficiency is 90% AC to RF which is pretty remarkable. Um, and you can see here that the transmitter savings on an annual basis for that situation is $124,100. But wait, there's more. If we utilize MDCL, MDCL will reduce the power consumption by approximately 30%, and you could see a savings of almost $200,000 a year. Now, if you happen to have an AM transmitter site, that uses air conditioning, the additional cost of that air conditioning may add 10 to 15%. So you can see here the additional cost of that air conditioning and what that means. And now you're saving $228,000 a year because you have to remove that heat from the building, that extra heat that's been generated. And if you happen to be a person that is worried about global warming and the effect of, of uh, carbon going into the atmosphere, if you use MDCL on a 100 kilowatt transmitter that's running 100% modulation, 24 7, 365, you're reducing the carbon footprint by 1,042 tons of carbon per year. Pretty remarkable. So it's an excellent green message both ways, if you take the pun intended. Yep. Um, but, you know, and if, if you think about going forward to the next step, um, which is the the new algorithm for AMC, yep. you get to the point where you can basically pretty well have a return on investment for the new transmitter in about a year, which is exactly amazing. Which is, you know, and this is an interesting thing. Most of the people that watch our webinars, I will say, are probably engineers, as we are. And, and the interesting thing is sometimes we find it difficult to communicate with the owners of the stations or the, the bean counters. We find it difficult to communicate um, the financial advantage of making various technical changes. The word they want to hear is ROI, return on investment. And all you do is you take the price of the thing you want to buy and, and divide it by the total savings per year, and that will tell you the ROI as measured in years. How long does it take to get your money back? And then the interesting thing is, over the life of that investment going forward, that's years that you're saving money that just goes straight into your pocket. The transmitter's already been paid for. That's, that's money that's going straight into your pocket. And, and that's the terminology. You want to buy something new? ROI is your friend. That's how you get something new in your station. So anyway, one more thing I wanted to do before we get out of here today is to, to walk you through the AUI, and we'll see if we can make this work now. So this is an AM transmitter that is currently running um, on the air 
uh, in, in our factory in Bangor, Maine. And I wanted to bring this up here so you can see that there's audio on. So right now we've just got some left channel audio in it. Um, and you can see this is a this is a five kilowatt transmitter. We're running at one kilowatt. Um, just to show you the kind of information that you can see in the AUI, we've got a number of meters that we've chosen to put up there. We see the our module temperature, the B plus current, the forward peak powder, power. Uh, PDM duty cycle, PA voltage, and the temperature on the graph on the right. Now, it's important to understand that we're actually able to see far more than that. So if I click here, and then I click on modules, then I can come over here and look at a particular module, and I can see the things that we're monitoring on just a single module. So you can see the DC current, the PDM duty cycle, B plus voltage, everything, even the fan speed of each of the fans is is uh, visual uh, you can see um, very easily I can actually look at all of the modules I think at the same time yep so these are th there's two modules in a five kilowatt and I can see all of that information at a glance now remember this is a web server built into the transmitter which means that I can see this from anywhere if I've got an internet connection to the transmitter via VPN or what have you um, I have the ability to see this and control it from anywhere I want under password control. Um, let's look at, for just a second here, let's look at menu presets and show everybody where the settings are for, um, for dynamic carrier control. So dynamic carrier control is not currently running on this transmitter, but these are the choices that we could have. So we've been talking about AMC. Let's select AMC. When we do that, we can choose the maximum compression. Now, I, I think it's limited to 3, 3 dB, I, I would assume. Let's see if that works. Let's save that and make it current. And that should, oh, didn't work. Don't know why. 3 and save. And change. Do I have to turn it off and turn oh. it back on? Uh, you probably have to change the format, which is now an AM stereo CQAM. Okay. Just change it to AM carrier? Yeah. Let's... In any case, that's how you do it. Um, and not sure why it's not showing up when I do that. Let's just go ahead and save that. And save that. And it goes back. I think, oh, there it came up. Okay. So you can configure this any way you want. And when we add this new form of, of uh, AMC, it will automatically be one of the pull down choices, and you'll be able to configure it in that same fashion. You can also choose here which AM source, where's the audio coming from. It can come from Balanced Analog, AES EBU, one or two or an internal audio player. And that's kind of an interesting thing. So um, many stations, when you talk about end-to-end -end reliability from microphone through antenna, the studios are pretty darn reliable. I mean, there's even multiple studios now. And, and solid-state modular-based transmitters are very reliable. And to be honest, these days, the least reliable bit, the, light, the bit that's most likely going to take you off air is the STL, whether that's an IP STL or an RF STL. Um, the STL is, is typically a single point of failure. So what we did in these transmitters is we added some features that make it possible to back up that STL. So one of the things that you can do in this transmitter is we can actually go into it and we can configure up streams. We can, if your station is broadcasting a web stream, um, we can set up that web stream. You can plug in the URL for that stream, and should that um, STL fail, the transmitter can figure that out and can switch and pick up your web stream and put it on the air for you as a backup. And then it could send you an email or an SMS to tell you what it did. Um, if that fails, if the whole studio has a brownout, I can come over to the audio player and I can plug in a USB device and I can create a playlist of WAVE or MP3 files and have it play that out on the air to keep you on the air just in case. 
So these are things that we've done inside this transmitter. I don't think anybody else has even considered doing, certainly not in the AM field. Um, but this is all a function that is built into your uh, transmitter at no extra charge, and it's it's there for you to play with. What's your favorite function on the on the NX AUI? W. You're asking me? Oh, I I like the spectrum analyzer. I think that's just a fantastic thing to have on there. So let's let's talk about that a little bit. I can come into the spectrum analyzer and I can choose to look at the transmitter output, um, or I can look at the internal signal. Um, I can also change the resolution bandwidth, the span, etc. Um, and then I can, well, interesting, just like a real spectrum analyzer, I've got a marker here that I can drop, and you can see the marker right there. Let's see if we can put it right on that spot. There. Now I can see that I'm 23.1 kilohertz above the frequency of the carrier, and my amplitude is 92 dB. So it's 100 dB top to bottom, and plus or minus um, 100 kilohertz uh, is what I'm looking at uh, with this system. So that's the spectrum analyzer, and it's a, it's a very powerful tool, and it's quite accurate. It's very useful um, if you're doing digital broadcasting. You can see the the mask here, the North American mask that accommodates uh, accommodates HD radio AM. Uh, but it's also useful just to prove that your signal is 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 doing the right things on on AM. My favorite screen here is the Smith chart. I have to admit. Um, if you see the little red dot there in the center, I can zoom in on it here. But that is the the signal going into a dummy load, which is why you don't see the characteristic curve here. And again, I have the marker, so I can click on that, and it's normalized to one. Uh, uh, to one. So the impedance there is 0.9774 plus J0326 at a frequency of 300 hertz minus the carrier. And if we had more modulation going there of a, of a higher frequency, you'd be able to see a real curve going there and uh, be able to see what your antenna is really doing. Interestingly enough, a lot of people have no idea that their antenna systems often change impedance uh, in the dry season versus the wet season, for instance. Yeah, I've actually used this, this tool to, to adjust antenna tuning units, yep. and it's, it's fantastic for that. It's wonderful for that purpose, and and you have an idea. You know, I, I once came upon a station in in Asia where the 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 you know, AM transmitter was not getting out anymore. You could hardly hear it at the end of the driveway, and and yet it was putting all this power into the antenna, and the transmitter was generally happy. But I went out into the antenna where the antenna was and, and where the radials were, and it was actually in a rice field. And they had had oxen with a plow, and they had actually they were plowing the rice field, but they'd actually plowed up the radials, <laughs> and and the water around the edge of the tower was warm, uh, because that's where all their power was going. It wasn't going into the into uh, the, the coverage of the station in any fashion. So, very useful tools. How would you have figured that out without this kind of stuff? Exactly. So, all right. So let's. Uh, Let's go and see if there's any questions that have been asked. Yes, in fact, there are. So let's uh, let's get to ask uh, answering them here. Uh, gentleman says, uh, when will the NX1 be available? I had to order a J1000 instead. Wendell, I'll let you answer that one. Um, well, um, I don't know the answer to that. I do know that um, the J1000 recently had a uh, design upgrade to it, the RF uh, FETs have been changed to a much more ruggedized version, um, but the actual next next family uh, adjustment, I'm not sure when that will come out. Yeah, me too. I, I I've always looked forward to that, but it's a tough it's a tough uh, it's a tough sell. There's an awful lot of new stuff we're working on. That's correct. Uh, I've got a couple of questions here that are in Spanish. Um, and I'm I'm sorry that uh, the, the the webinar is not in Spanish. Um, we are recording the webinar and we'll post it on our YouTube uh, channel, uh, so you can go over at your leisure. Uh, and perhaps there'll at some point in time there'll be the opportunity to translate some of the written webinar uh, into Spanish. So the, for those of you who are watching in Spanish, we apologize. Uh, no habla español at this time. Um, John points out you still need a greenie for the connectors. Valid point. 
<laughs> yes. And let's see here. Rick asks, um, how much AM stereo CQAM is going on with these stations rather than iBox since HD receivers can decode CQAM? That's built into the transmitter as well. We do CQAM. Um, and it's it's up to the station how they uh, how they want to configure the system. As recent as last week, um, I had a customer call and ask how to configure his transmitter for CQAM. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing how good it sounds. You know, AM properly done can sound absolutely wonderful. Even in analog, it can sound oh, perfectly absolutely. wonderful. And the transmitters are so linear now that broadcasting CQAM is is like falling off a log. It's that easy. Remember all of the types of distortion we had to deal with uh, in order to make CQAM sound good? I mean, you know, there, there was the incidental phase modulation, the IPM that we had to deal with, and all these things we had to fix in old plate modulated transmitters. It's just, it's perfect now. There is none of that. It's, it doesn't exist anymore. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So I'm not seeing any other questions. So I think we've done our job. Oh, but there's one more. It says, what a change MDCL is made for testing on air. Does the power reduce or is there any noticeable interruptions? So theoretically not. Now we just had a little hiccup and I think it had to do with the fact that you've got to cycle the transmitter on and off. So that may be part of it. Um, but uh, in terms of power reduction, if you're actually looking at the peak modulation of the transmitter and, and considering that to be the power, no, there's no change in power. But if you look at the antenna current or something that represents the total RF going to the antenna, that's going to reduce because the component that is the carrier is actually and intentionally being reduced, but it doesn't um, cause any effect uh, to the over, overall signal as heard by uh, the listener. Is that what, how you would interpret that, W? Exactly, yes. No, I, I, that's, that's very true. The, the, the power that went into a, a useless bit of, uh, bit of the spectrum was reduced yep. intentionally so that we can yep. put the power where it really belongs in the sidebands. Well, I mean, let's, let's, let's look, look at a different way. Many, many broadcast engineers are also ham radio operators, and it was probably in the 50s or early 60s when single sideband took over for AM, for voice broadcasting in the amateur radio bands, and there was good reason. The same amount of power went a whole lot further when you didn't have a carrier to, to get in the way, and it's taking us a little bit longer in the broadcast industry, but we're getting there. Um, so there's more questions coming up as we speak. Uh, does the NX series come with DRM and HD built in? The answer is no, neither one is built in. However, there is a spigot, there is a place where you can plug I and Q over, um, over AES into the input of the transmitter and therefore connecting up an external uh, DRM exciter and content server or HD radio exporter and XGen card into the transmitter is a piece of cake and uh, very simple to do. So no, we don't burden the cost of the transmitter with those technologies to begin with because it would add significantly to the cost, uh, but it, we make it dead easy to do it. So it's very simple for you to add. Is there any typical curve on the Smith chart that shows us the matching antenna is good? That's a good one for you, W. Yeah, so um, way, way back years ago, an engineer from Continental Electronics wrote a paper. Um, his name was Woodward, if I remember correctly. And he talked about Hermitian symmetry. Right. So um, it was important because in a, just a pure AM system, you want um, the same amount of reactants on either side of the carrier at a given um frequency away. So plus 10 kilohertz and minus 10 kilohertz, you wanted to be um, plus J10 or minus J10, depending on which side you're on. Right. So um, it should be symmetrical. Exactly. And, you know, when on the Smith chart, you would see a nice little happy face facing open to the left hand side. Mm -hmm. um, now, what we found doing digital radio was is that in fact became far more important 
and um, with uh, with digital broadcast, you have to have both the 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 size of the happy face fairly small and uh, the phase rotated in the right direction um, to give you optimum performance. Yep. And the Smith chart just lets you lets you see it real time. Now in just in just seconds, and you do it with regular modulation. You're not sitting here putting a tone oscillator into a transmitter and scratching down on a sheet of paper each measurement as you as exactly. you do that as you do that. Um, uh, I have a gentleman by the name of Chuck says I have an XL60 that runs at 50 kilowatts. How much savings could I see? Well, so Wendell, what would be the typical efficiency of an XL60? XL60 is about 84% efficient. So we'll take this to 84 here. Um, 84. Oops, I did it wrong. Excuse me. Got to go here. 84. And then let's take this to 60 kilowatts all the way across. And we're looking at somewhere, if you're using MDCL and you don't have MDCL on your existing transmitter, you're going to save somewhere in the neighborhood of $63,000 a year, almost sixty-four. So that assumes that the transmitter, the, the XL60 that you've got, is still making the nameplate efficiency many years later, which I don't know if that's true or not. So, And that's at $0.17 cents per kilowatt hour. Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean that's a that's a pretty dramatic savings, isn't it? It is, it is, it is. Yeah. All right, um, I've got another question in Spanish, and again, my apologies. How about GPS locked carrier frequency? That's built right into the transmitter, so there's a little uh, a place you can plug in 10 megahertz, and you can plug in one PPS from a GPS. It's an external GPS, um, but you can you can buy that from us, or you can source those signals yourself. Plug them into the transmitter and select that within the AUI, and now you're dead on your frequency and synchronized as well. Um, what is Nautel's strategy in the face of shortened component availability? Oh, really good question. W, you want to address that? Interesting. Um, so just read it again. So he says, what is Nautel's strategy in the face of shortened component availability? I presume this is a reaction to the fact that some of the other organizations making AM transmitters have recently changed their plans relative to selling AM transmitters because some parts are becoming unavailable. Ah, uh, okay. And that's because they haven't done the design of the transmitters as recent as we have. Um, uh, we have a much, much newer design in the NX, and we're always on top. I was talking with people today about checking the components for end-of-life notices and how last-time buy notices and things so we can protect ourselves. But generally speaking, Nautel has has uh, gone way out in front of the crowd and, and, and has had designs occur uh, far more rapidly than our competitors and therefore stayed ahead of uh, that kind of problem. Absolutely. I mean, we have a team just dedicated to watching end-of-life components and making sure that we we have the, the technology in place to, to keep us on board. Yep. Uh, Marco, our friend Marco, uh, says, as much as you'd like me to buy a new NX transmitter, for my XL60, I did the field modification for it to run MDCL. Bravo. That's great. We're, we're happy to hear that the XL60 is still doing the job for you, Marco. Uh, does MDCL affect CQAM performance in the pattern nulls? I don't believe so. Yeah, there's I don't been, know the answer to that myself. There's been a broad range of, of testing that's been done uh, on, uh, on MDCL, and I think that anything that would have affected the testing um, would have affected uh, similarly a CQAM signal. I don't think the CQAM signal makes great use of the carrier in any fashion. Do we know to need to notify the FCC since our current changes? Yeah, you need to you need to tell them you're doing MDCL. That's that's the main thing. Um, I think that there is a process for that. You can find out uh, more um, by checking the FCC and, and asking them about MDCL. Um, let's see here. Uh, any document with the J1000 available? That's a good question. I think customer service typically sends out a document um, as changes are made. So uh, so people can make use of that. 
And that is the answer. That is the questions that we have. So we've, we had a whole lot more questions, a flurry of questions. If we didn't get to your question, we will uh, go through the list and send you an email after the fact. And um, W, any final thoughts you'd like to, to add? Um, no, I, I think the, the information is pretty dramatic just on this one slide. Um, and I thank everybody for their time to give us a listen today. Now, hopefully, everybody is seeing this uh, this slide here. And if you want, take a slide a, a, a screen capture of this slide. Use print screen and take a screen capture, and you can have all of these addresses for a whole lot of new information that you may find helpful uh, about MDCL, about that new BBC AMC paper, uh, about the huge installation, the 2 million watt installation we did in Hungary. Uh, you can find the archive location for all Nautel webinars. There's my address, email address, and Wendell's email address, and the new website for Nautel support, support.nautel.com. So um, and unless you've got anything else, W, I think we'll call it a day. Fantastic. Thank you, Chuck. Thank you, Wendell, and for Wendell Lonergan and all of our friends at Nautel, thank you for being a part of our webinar today. We'll see you the next one in one week. Bye-bye for now. Bye-bye.